So good evening everybody, thank you very much for joining in. This is 10th in the series. Today we are going to speak about one of the most beautiful topics one of the most beautiful topics in the world of business valuation which is known as free cash flow to the firm. As we all know, every second day we are getting a news that any company want to do a M&A, any company want to do a strategic acquisition, people are looking for buyouts, they want to do a buyback of their shares and so on and so forth. With this, the, the concept of valuation is giving, gaining momentum across the world. Well, from this side, I am Rahul Madan, working as a corporate treasurer, taking out a cut, taking care of from both front and middle office in EXS Services India. EXS Services India is an inter inter Indian counterpart of a US NASDAQ listed firm, which is EXS Service Holding INC. And at the same time, I am working as a treasury trainer and business consultant for various forums across the world, predominantly in Asia. And I am also a global speaker of all my 26 forums. My first book is already published in New York and second is scheduled to be published in Commonwealth of Australia by end of December 2014. And with this, we are going to here start up on the topic which is free cash for the firm. However, I would like to reiterate the concept here that free cash to the firm or any other concept of the business valuation is fully dependent upon an art. It is not in science, right? It is an art because if you take n companies of the world, then you will get to know the different companies of the world have different set of valuation, but they are not going to be the same. Every company is different from one or sec one or one or second part. So we need to remember that we are dealing with an art rather not a science. So we need to be very careful about that. So what do you mean by free cash flow to the firm? Well, the valuation formula for free cash flow to firm is known as your operating income, which is 1 minus tax, so called your capex, so called your depreciation. This is also known as midline. This is depreciation, which is also known as non cash expenditure. This is also known as delta. non cash change in working time now what do you mean by free cash to the firm free cash to the firm refers to the total amount of the, the total amount of cash which is with the firm or i would say free cash with the firm right now what do you mean by well we all know that free cash to the firm is fully dependent upon your so called accounting income however however we also need to acknowledge the fact that accounting income play a very significant very significant role to calculate the concept like free cash flow to the firm, free cash flow to the equity, and free cash flow to debt. Well, I would like to reiterate the fact that free cash flow to the firm is equal to free cash flow to equity plus free cash flow to debt. Now, accounting income is further divided into two parts. In fact, there are three parts. One is known as top line which is known as sales, please be note that this excludes other income. We have various companies across the world to whom we had, who, whom we know they are valuing their company or they are running their treasury center as a profit center. So we should exclude this while, while, while computing the bottom line. We should calculate bottom line, which is purely based upon operating income of the world. Second is known as top line. Second is the, is the bottom line. Bottom line is profit after tax. Then you have a middle line. Middle line refers to your so called operating income or habit. Now, there are free cash flow to the firm is based upon your operating flows. Operating flows are predominantly divided into three parts. One is known as uh, extraordinary growth. Second refers to as high growth. Second, third refers to as ordinary growth. Fourth refers to as a concept which is known as terminal valuation. The terminal valuation in himself is divided into two parts one which holds some value and second is decay. Now extraordinary growth rate, take an example of all these three. Apple is coming up with, with, with a product called iPhone 6. And iPhone 6, they are coming up with a screen wherein if you even take a hammer and put it on a screen, now that screen is not going, not going to break. And this, they are coming up with a product which is something special because every second day we will get to know one or second form of phone is getting broken only because it's stiff from your hand. So in that sense, 
Apple is going to face roughly three to five years of extraordinary high growth, and and Apple is going to face roughly a uh, few years of high growth, then the ordinary growth followed followed by the terminal valuation. As a corporate treasurer and as a finance professional, you also have to agree with the fact that there is no company, there is no product which are going to face the terminal value forever, and at the same time, there is no company, there is no product which are going to face every time the high growth rate so you need to make sure that you continue to improve you imp improve your product line and so on and so forth alternatively you also have to make sure that you also have to make sure that your product line should be so strong which will not only increase you are basically return return to equity but also increase your uh, profit after tax and so on and so forth now this growth rate is further divided like this This is divided like this. Retention ratio into return to equity. Now, what is what is retention ratio? Retention ratio means money is left to profit after tax. Now, retention ratio means. Take an example of Infosys. Infosys was having four billion dollar of cash. This time they transferred roughly two billion dollar of cash from their pad. Now, if you see the cash and cash equivalent, you will get to know they are having roughly six billion dollar of cash. Now, this six billion dollar of cash in the hands of Infosys, Infosys would increase the business valuation of Infosys for a longer period of time. However, majority of the cash line would increase the working capital. So, you once again dependent on the concept of of non cash working capital. Now the growth rate is dependent upon retention ratio into return to equity. Higher the retention ratio, higher the return to equity, higher would be the growth rate. At the end, non-cash working capital. Now, what do you mean by working capital? Working capital is current asset. Minus current liabilities, you have to say non-cash current asset. You have to say non-cash current liabilities. This would be known as non-cash working capital, and you have to exclude hash. Here I'm uh, hash. Hash was the total amount of derivatives. So uh, you have to take all derivatives out, and you would let up to the separate concept of the of the non-cash working capital, which is. Non-cash working capital excluding derivatives. At the end, I would like to reiterate the fact that free cash to the firm is one of the important concepts we have while doing the business valuation. And also at the same time, we also need to agree with the thought that the free cash to the firm is an art, is not a science. So if you are going to take an example, you are valuing the IT gamut in India, where you have SCL, you have Infi, you have Comizant. You have Accenture, you have Sapient, and you have so on and so forth. These all companies, although on face would doing an IT business, however, they are different. So we are living in a world of art, not a science. In fact, you need to make sure that how the business of the company is going and how to value it. At the end, I would like to thank you very much for your participation in the video, and you are most welcome to contact me at nine eight double nine two four two nine seven eight. Or you can write an email to Rahul Magan eight at the rate gmail dot com. Thank you very much for joining in, and thanks for your time. Thank you.